maioria das visões sobre a internet é positiva. As pessoas acham que a internet é benéfica para a educação e até mesmo para o desenvolvimento do país. No entanto, essa não é uma visão unânime. Tem muitos pensadores hoje no mundo inteiro que são contra a internet, que pensam que a internet muitas vezes pode prejudicar as nossas vidas, pode mexer com o jeito como o nosso cérebro funciona e até mesmo pode tornar as pessoas narcisistas e superficiais. Muitas das ideias desses pensadores acabam sendo vistas como ideias radicais. Por exemplo, esse pensador chamado Nicholas Carr diz que estamos nos tornando pessoas superficiais. Hoje todo mundo quer saber de ser multitarefa, de fazer muitas coisas ao mesmo tempo, e a hipótese dele é de que ao fazer isso nós fazemos tudo mal. If you look through the, the history of, of technology, and particularly media technology, you see that when we adopt a new tool for thinking, it often changes the way we think. And, and the reason is because different technologies place different emphasis on different kinds of thinking. And as we shift our habits, uh, because we're using the technology so much, we kind of train our brains to be distracted, uh, to be constantly interrupted and we begin to lose the ability to think deeply. There's evidence that some types of creativity require attentive thought, require you to shield yourself from distractions and really focus on one thing. We're talking with a lot more people a lot more quickly, but we're talking in much shorter sound bites, uh, in short updates, in texts, in tweets. And what we're seeing is this increasing superficiality that seems to be one of the fundamental characteristics of this technology. I spend eight hours a day on the internet. At least four hours a day. I use it every day. Uh, for anything from where do I go eat or uh, where's the, what's the latest show in the city. Sometimes I try to get away, but it's hard to, you know, so used to. It's just part of life now. It's like breathing almost. My home computer broke and I purposely have not gotten it fixed. Um, so that I would spend less time on the internet. My generation, I feel like, was the last to remember what it was like without technology, you know, or so much technology all the time. So the newer generations, that's something that we have to remind them of because they'll never actually grasp anything. Without it, we can't even imagine it. E a crítica que se faz à internet hoje é exatamente que a gente está caminhando para estruturas sociais são cada vez mais parecidas com nós mesmos. As pessoas querem comprar o que as outras compram, querem escutar as músicas que os outros ouvem e assim por diante. Isso está sendo muito criticado, por exemplo, por gente como o Andrew King, que acha que se a gente continuar desse jeito, a gente vai se isolar cada vez mais em mundos particulares. A internet é uma eco chamber, é um mirror. Quando nós olhamos into it, nós increasingly see ourselves. And that's what we get pleasure out of. The truth is, I think it probably makes us less worldly. It makes us more parochial because we naturally gravitate to groups and individuals who agree with everything we say. I don't think we can only blame the internet for this. It's a broader cultural problem. We see it on television. So there's something very troubling about the disappearance of the center in this world. In order to connect with other people, you have to put yourself into these categories. Like you have to say, I am a single, young woman who is interested in this or that. And at first that's okay, but the problem is that then you start to just see things that reinforce that point of view. And eventually you start living in this world that is like a cartoon of who you were at one moment in time. It makes it a little harder for people to really grow into themselves. Jaron Lanier é um pensador que é famoso não só pelos seus dreadlocks, mas também pelo fato dele ser um dos pioneiros da internet. Lá nos anos 80, ele criou a ideia da chamada realidade virtual. E ele sempre esteve presente em todos os desenvolvimentos da rede. O que é interessante é que nos últimos anos, ele tem desenvolvido uma visão cada vez mais crítica sobre a internet. Ele tem dito, por exemplo, que cada vez mais a arquitetura da rede está deixando de lado o seu aspecto mais importante, que é o aspecto do humano. I think the thing that makes me most pessimistic is when I run into a young person who says, my ideals are this open thing, it's Facebook and it's Twitter. 
And I sort of feel like telling them, oh my God, you know, you're just repeating the old ideas that we used to have 20 years ago as if they're your own. You need to think for yourself. You can't take on a generational identity that was actually packaged for you by older people. I feel like there's so much sort of repetition of Orkut, openness, WikiLeaks, and it's also packaged. It's also phony. It's also easy. It's also um, lazy. You know, it's just like repeating the rhetoric. You have to learn to think for yourself. And when, when somebody isn't thinking for themselves, it kind of depresses me.